What up, what up? Wimbush here, and today we're gonna take a look at the Headshot plugin for Character Creator 3. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so I have Character Creator 3 opened up. I'm gonna get started by opening up Headshot. So there's two ways you can do it. You can come up to Plugins, come down to Headshot, and then click on Headshot. Or if you look over here on my left-hand corner, you have a tab here that says Headshot. You can click on that also to get the Headshot. So when you have Headshot, there's actually two different versions. We have one that is the auto version, which I'll show you first. But the limitations of the auto version, even though it does a pretty good job of replicating the character that you're trying to create, it's, um, it's limited to a 1K texture. And so this would be good for like medium to long range shots. So if you want to fill your scene up with a bunch of different characters, this is what you'll want to use. And it does a pretty good job. But if you want to use something that you're going to be pretty close up on your character, that's when you're gonna to wanna to use the pro option. If I click on pro, you can see that we actually have up to 4K textures on there. So with auto, even if you are using a 4K texture, it's gonna compress it down to 1K, but I mean, it still gets pretty good results. So let me start by taking one of the headshots that I took earlier. I just took this on my, um, my Galaxy Note 8. I just wanted to see if you can actually use like a selfie from a cell phone to get good results. So I'm just gonna click on this one. Okay, so now it brings up our generate character. Let me click on mail. And then I'm gonna do clean and rough. And then I'm gonna click on generate. Now this should take a few moments depending on the type of computer that you have. And so as soon as this is done, we'll jump right back into it. Okay, so as you can see, it actually made my character into a male. He's a little bit skinnier than what I am, but I'll fix that in a minute. But if I scroll into my head here, you can actually see it does a pretty good job of auto-generating my head here, even to the point to where like it brings in your own hair textures or its own hair textures. And it even has my little widow peak <laughs> replicated there. And so, um, yeah, auto-generate, that's about it. I mean, you could come down here on the left-hand side you could change your eye color if you want. You can come down here and actually change out your skin type. So let me, um, in my lower left-hand corner, I'm gonna go down to auto update and I'm gonna click that on so that if I change out my skin type here, let me say like um, old male. So I'm gonna click on old male and when I click on that, it's gonna automatically generate what it's gonna look like me as an old person. But if I didn't click the auto update, if you click that tab, it doesn't do anything. But if you notice down here, there's a little tab that says update skin. So it does the same thing, like you click on it, then you click update skin, and then it will update it. But let's see what my results are for the old man. So yeah, I mean, it does a pretty good job. It gives me the white marks here on the side, the white stubble. Yeah, does does a pretty good job. So, um. Yeah, that's, that's about that. So I don't think we could do active sculpt, can we? Okay, yeah, we can actually. So if I wanted to adjust my sculpt here a little bit, so my head is a little bit more oval, so I could click in, drag this down, and just bring this in a little bit. And if you look over here under active sculpt tools, we have, we could go to our eyes and really adjust out our eyes and how we want them. So this is good, like if you're doing like a celebrity or something like that and you wanna use it for a VFX shot and you really want them to look how they should look, you have complete control over all these different pose morphs. Even the airs, we could bring these out. So you can play around with this all day. But like I said, I mean, they say that this is good for medium to long shots. I think you get pretty good results. And so if you wanted to use this as a close up, I don't see why you couldn't. But let me show you what the Pro does because we have a lot more options in there. So I'm gonna go back up here to my upper left-hand corner. I'm gonna click on Pro, click OK, because I'm gonna be switching. Then I'm gonna use the same headshot. I'm gonna do a male, I'm gonna do clean rough. And I guess you could do babies as well because there's an option down here that says selective a baby as a subject, but I'm not a baby, I'm a grown man. So let's generate this out. Again, I'll catch you guys whenever this is done. Okay, so it's done on the pro level. It's actually the um, the texture looks a little bit better on here. As you can notice, it makes me bald on here. And that's one of the things with pro, 
it doesn't give you the hair texture. If you go back to auto, oops, well, I don't want to do that. But over here underneath, it kind of tells you what each one does. And under auto, it tells you that it has a hair texture that it makes for it. But that's all right, because I actually got a hair texture off the marketplace that I can use on my character. And so what I want to do from here is it made my head kind of like a P-shape. Like I, it got the textures and the skin and everything in there pretty well. But let me go about just in the head. And so what I want to do is, let me see, I want to come over to here where it says image, um, image matching tools. That's it. So right beside the headshot, click on this. And this should bring my photo in over top of my image. And so now what I want to do is on my left hand side, I'm going to click on this plus symbol for image matching tools. And then I'm going to turn on grayscale. And I'm just going to turn up the contrast. Let me adjust the opacity. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to get a good blend between my 3D mesh and my actual headshot there. So that I can go in and start adjusting it. So I can start um, adjusting my model. Okay, so now I want to come back up to Active Sculpt Morph. I'm going to click on this first one just to get a good general shape. So let me, um, yeah, my head is a little bit ovalish. So let me pull this up right there. What I'm trying to do is match it to my image that's underneath. And if you wanted to, over here on the left hand side, it says symmetrical. So right now I have it checked on for symmetrical, which means it moves both sides at once. You can turn it off if you want, but I'm gonna leave it on just so I don't mess my mesh up too much. So I'm just gonna try to get a good overall shape here. Match it up as good as I can. Then I'm gonna come back over here on my left hand side. Um, this one right here will give you a lot more face morph tools you could work with. So I could really sculpt in my nose if I want to, something like that. Or I could go on individual, which will be a little bit more precise and easier to work with. So I clicked on my eye, so I could actually adjust my eyes in here. I'm not gonna to spend too much time on this here. Let me go to my nose. I'm not sure if it's picking up in the video or not, but our model is actually moving and we're just kind of lining it up over top of our image there. So if I move my lips and then afterwards, we can actually go and adjust it without the image as well. If you want to do some personalized morphing to it. So about there looks, let me see what this looks like. Let me turn this off. So it doesn't look bad. And what you want to do is when you're actually morphing this for real, you want to kind of jump between the photo and your 3D mesher, just so you can kind of see what you're doing. But I think that looks pretty good. Maybe let me adjust my head a little bit more. So I'm gonna click on this, bring my head up, bring my chin down a little bit, bring my cheeks in a tad bit. Click that off. And there we go. So I think that that's a pretty good representation of me. Like I said before, I don't know why it always gives me this skinny body. I'm not that small. So let me come over and let me bulk them up a little bit. So over on my right hand side under modify, no, not modify, the one that's next to it, Morse. I'm going to click on body and there's an actual tab here for bodybuilder. So I'm just going to jack Wimbush up here a little bit. Give him a little bit more bulk, you know. There we go. Yeah, I ate a lot of protein, so there we go. Somewhere around there. And as you can see in my picture, I usually keep my hair pretty short. And so if I come over to, let's see, content, I should have some hair that I bought off the marketplace. So right here, we go to base. Then we come down to hair. And this one is conforming hair. So yeah, I found this on the marketplace is actually called light skin, which I guess I'm considered light skin. I don't know, but this is for African American hairs. I just picked a short one. It's only like five bucks. So I'm gonna double click on this one. Give this a second to conform the hair to my body. And there we go. Now we got some hair. Got some nap naps there up top, but that's all right. 
so I think this looks pretty good I mean yeah it looks like a younger Wimbush maybe I can make him a little bit older so I'm gonna go under headshot let me scroll down here to the bottom and I guess I could click old mail it's gonna maybe make me a little bit too old we'll see give it a second to work his magic dang it's a yeah it's a little bit too old not quite that old so I'm gonna go back to let's say clean and rough and then I'm gonna show you guys something as well with the eyes that you want to take care of so if you're doing any type of facial animations like if you bring in the talk um, plug-in and start doing like the talking and stuff you're going to notice when your eyes blink that the textures are going to be stretched so let me find where we're supposed to go to click on there we go so if i click off into the open area here come over to my adjustment panels here my attributes window if i look down here on display you can actually close your eyes and if i go to my character with his eyes closed you can see the texture is kind of um stretching right there which doesn't look good when he's blinking his eyes so that's an easy fix if i come over here i'm under headshot come down to my left hand corner under eyelid mask click on this and if i scroll down to the bottom we have um maximum eyelid fill let me click on that and you give us a few moments and you should see that the ai is actually going to take care of the texture in there and do a pretty good job of filling that in so looks like it's filled in now and it looks pretty good especially from this angle here so we can actually eye blink if I open, yeah, open and close the mouth, no stretching at all. So I say all in all, this is a pretty good plugin here. So I can't wait to start using this in like my 3D and VR projects. I mean, I have a whole bunch of ideas of what I want to use this for. But all in all, I think this is really, really cool. So I just wanted to give you guys a little look at what the headshot plugin could do. I saw this a few months ago. I think I saw this at SIGGRAPH or maybe it was online, but I've been following it for a few weeks now. It's something that was really cool that I was really looking forward to to really see if I could use this in my workflow. As you can see, you take a shot with even your cell phone and you could get something that looks pretty, pretty good. You know, you might have to fudge around with it for a little bit, but the cool thing is you can go to the Revolution website, download a 30 day trial of the headshot and even character creator. So go to the website, download the trials and give everything a try for yourself. And as always, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more like Real Illusion, like the iClone character creator type tutorials, make sure you let me know down in the comments below. And until next time, keep creating. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.